How many of you treat peripheral neuropathy? How many of you have patients that come in with numbness, burning, tingling in their hands or feet or down their arms or legs? About half of you, okay. Well, we have a specific program that we offer for patients that have neuropathy. And we, first of all, we test them neurologically and metabolically. We will run lab work. We'll do a CBC. We'll do sensitivity testing. Uh, maybe test the immune system itself. Uh, we might do a urea breath test just to find out if they're, they have proper digestion, that they're getting the nutrients from their food. But then we'll do the neurological testing. We'll actually find out how much sensory loss is there, grip strength, uh, strength of the, the muscles, sensation in general. Is it, is it truly numb? Is it weak? Or is there actually tingling there? Because patients will describe it differently. So in our program, we use cold laser. And if you don't know about cold laser, it helps the nerves to heal. It helps all soft tissue and bone to heal because it's a certain wavelength of light that we use uh, over top of the nerves, over top of the muscles, over top of the joints. We also use the Rebuilder, which is a type of neurological electrical stem. And that is something that is very effective for neuropathy type conditions, from carpal tunnel to tarsal tunnel to just standard burning, numbness, tingling, hands, feet, arms, legs, starting somewhere away from the spine, which is why it's called peripheral neuropathy. But a lot of patients will hear of it as neuropathy, and they've got those symptoms. If the patient has stenosis, we'll use spinal decompression. If they have stenosis of the spine, where the nerves are not able to get through there because the discs are bulging out, putting pressure, closing down the opening where the nerves come through, where the spinal cord is, then that's going to affect the circulation, the function of the nerves, and we treat that with spinal decompression. So those are like you know the three cornerstones besides the nutrition. If we find that they do have other positive findings, if they're sensitive to gluten, corn, casein, soy, eggs, yeast, uh, if they have abnormal blood markers, so we put that together as a complete program to find out what's wrong with them. And I like to say we leave no stone unturned because, you know, head to toe, we're checking them out to make sure everything is working the way it should, as, as will you once we go through the program a little more. But it's, it's important that you address these patients because more and more and more are get, developing this condition because of diet and lifestyle. Diabetic neuropathy is a popular one, okay? Statin-induced neuropathy two very common things. So if they're eating the wrong things or taking the wrong drugs and they're blocking the production of new nerves, that is a problem. And they will develop neurological symptoms if they are sensitive to it. Not everyone's going to, but if they're taking a certain drug that their body does not react well to, that they're already sensitive to because they have a weak nervous system or weak, uh, low essential fatty acid intake, low antioxidant intake, glutathione, vitamin D, all these things that we can basically test for, then you're going to find that they will develop symptoms. And once you start supporting that, because they may have had the injury long ago, just like you could have an uh, injury to a nerve or somebody have a concussion and damaged their brain years ago, well, sometimes the damage stays there until it gets treated, until the nerves get a chance to heal. And depending upon how long it's been and what they've done about it and what they're still doing, will determine what their outcome will be, but you'll establish that with a good case history and with a good examination and any blood work or lab tests you need to do.